Good morning, friends. I am drinking not peppermint tea, but orange spice and gingerbread spice. I mixed them together. It smells amazing and tastes even better. Today is September 1st, and I know that it's not quite fall, and I do not want to rush summer away. However, in Portland, it has been fall-like as far as weather is concerned. For the past two weeks, the weather has been so autumnal and cozy. Also, I have this book that was gifted to me last year, and it is a poem for every autumn day, edited by Ali Asiri, and this book deems September 1st the beginning of fall. And so today, I cozied on up climbed into my reading tree and read the first poem, upon which I discovered that there's actually two poems a day. One that you're meant to read in the morning that's meant to give you perspective or like a mindset to see that day with, and then one that you're meant to read at the evening to reflect back on the day. I wanted to read you guys a part of the introduction because it was just so beautifully written in my opinion and I think summarizes this collection best. It says, presenting two poems tailored for opposite ends of the day seems particularly fitting for an anthology devoted to autumn, a season characterized by its sense of harmonious equilibrium between different states of being. It marries the lingering heat and brightness of a waning summer with the cold and creeping darkness of the forthcoming winter. It is a time in which things draw to a close Leaves fall and die in fiery heaps, and animals and humans prepare to retreat from sunny meadows and hillsides into cozier, confined spaces away from the elements. Yet it is also defined by an upsurge of life, renewal, and abundance. Crops are harvested and enjoyed after months of anticipation, while children and students begin their new scholarly adventures, often waved off by a relative in the autumn of their years. Balance is to be found at every autumnal juncture. Well, it is the season of Libra after all. So the introduction continues, but I just thought that that paragraph was so very lovely. And I think it highlighted the autumnal experience in a really, really cozy, comforting way. So yes, we have been in that in-between time for two weeks now. Um, the mornings are cold and crisp, and I can smell autumn in the air. However, by the afternoon, it is sunny and bright and still so warm, summer is not ready to leave quite yet. I absolutely love this in-between phase, and this year it's been particularly beautiful. So, with the coming of a new season in mind, I wanted to dedicate this vlog to setting intentions for fall. I don't know about you guys, but summer has somehow gotten away from me. I think it's because we were able to socialize and life just picked up and went super fast. And I feel like I blinked and I didn't do nearly as many of the things that I wanted to do. And I spent a lot of time feeling bad about the experiences that I wasn't having or guilting myself for not making the most of the bright, sunny, healthy, happy weather. And to avoid that, I want to go into fall with a bucket list of sorts, or just set some intentions that will enable me to make the most of this autumn slash fall, whatever you want to call it. I want to focus on things like the books that I want to read, or the places I want to go, like the activities I want to do. I have not been to a pumpkin patch in I don't know, four or five years? I cannot remember, actually. I wanna make apple cider from scratch. I've never done that before. I also want to try and watch one movie a week because I love movies, but I never make time for watching them. Last year, I really wanted to get good at making different soups and I really didn't experiment that much, so I want to get good at soups and bread this fall and winter. I want to spend more time outside, and I think that I will do that by reading the morning poem each morning outside, maybe in my reading tree. Mm, that sounds really, really nice. Um, I also just want to capture the fall experience or autumn and share it with you all, whether that be through video or illustration, written words, specimen frames, you name it. So, clearly, <laughs> I have a lot that I want to do, but when you zoom out, or perhaps zoom in on each 
task. They're not actually that unrealistic or overwhelming. They're just tiny, simple joys that I can prioritize in order to fully be present and live intentionally during autumn and then hopefully the seasons that follow. I really hope that I don't sound too cheesy or too curated. Really, I'm just feeling inspired. 2021 has been a super tough year for so many reasons and lately I've been feeling more like myself and just more inspired, more energized, and more alive. And with that, I would love to show you guys my favorite autumnal reads. Please, please, please share your favorites down in the comment section because the vast majority of my picks are fiction. Not only do they all kind of fall under the same genre, but there's also not a lot of diversity within the authors. I'd love to experience autumn through other perspectives from other places all around the world and in different forms. All recommendations are welcome. Also, I would love your movie recommendations. Without further ado, let's go find some books. stack or my fall favorite reads. Let me set them down. All right, so at random, this is not in order from favorite to least favorite or anything like that. The Book of Life by Deborah Harkness. What I would have loved to have put in this stack is A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness, which is the first book in this trilogy. This is the third book in the All Souls trilogy and I have not read this book yet so I will be reading it this fall but I read the first book in the trilogy last fall and it was so good. It was so good. I would describe it as an adult twilight mixed with dark academia. Next in my stack is The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison and I wouldn't classify this as an autumnal book However, it is organized by the seasons, and the season the story begins with is autumn. The writing is so, so beautiful. This story is absolutely heartbreaking as it explores our contemporary definition of beauty. What is beautiful? Toni Morrison peeks into various characters' lives who are considered varying degrees of beautiful by society, and we're shown what goes on behind the curtain. It is filled with emotion. Definitely a book that you want to be at home with, with a cozy blanket and a heartwarming cup of tea or coffee. Next, this one is quite random. It's America's Wild Woodlands by the National Geographic Society. And it's just an exploration of the various woodlands throughout the United States, throughout the seasons. It's really, really colorful with its pictures and fall foliage. There's something about recognizing trees as I walk around in the fall and I'm collecting vibrant red and orange and yellow leaves and being able to identify where they come from that's very comforting to me. Next in my stack is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I hope that I'm saying his last name correctly. Um, this is a big one. It's really thick. I wonder how many pages. 722 pages. I remember reading the beginning of this story and it being so autumnal. This story begins on a rainy night at an inn at the beginning of autumn with several strangers and a storyteller, which is just a wonderful beginning to any fantasy adventure. The writing is beautiful and magical and dark and the world building is incredible. I think that I want to reread this this fall. I also have Miss Peregrine's 
Peregrine's, Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. I've never read this book and so many people have suggested it to me. I must admit that I find the pictures very haunting. There are several old timey pictures scattered throughout the pages of this story, but I am a sucker for the orphanage trope and misfits finding a home and family. So maybe this fall will be the fall for this book. Maybe I'll also watch the movie. Next in my stack is The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. I have read this book and listened to the audiobook multiple times. I actually studied this in school. I love Neil Gaiman as an author. He also is a wonderful interviewee. I think that's the term. I've listened to any and every interview I could find of Neil Gaiman, and I just really enjoy him and his writing. Um, the Graveyard Book is kind of a spooky children's story. I think you could classify it with Coraline, but it takes place, you guessed it, in a graveyard. And there's magic and vampires and werewolves and ghouls and ghosts and so much more. It's a really lovely story. Don't be scared of it. <laughs> I'd love to read The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern this fall. I've not read this book yet and I mean, so many people have read and loved this story. And because it's a circus that takes place at night, it felt kind of spooky and I thought was perfect for the October time of year. It's a story I've been wanting to read for a very long time and I think that autumn will be the perfect time. Okay, just three more books. Um, Anne of Green Gables by L. M. Montgomery. I can't even begin to explain this story. I love it so very much and I especially love Anne's appreciation for nature and the seasons, especially October's. I also think that Wildwood by Colin Malloy and illustrated by Carson Ellis is a wonderful autumnal read. It takes place in Portland during fall and is a very whimsical children's story but in a magical realism kind of way. The Wildwood does exist. There are coyotes in the Wildwood. There are also bandits. There is a witch house and Piddock Mansion. These are all references to the story as well as real things in Portland and in the forest within Portland. And to conclude, the book that I've already talked about and will be reading throughout this season, A Poem for Every Day, edited by Ali Asiri. I'm looking forward to reading today's evening poem this evening. So. Lots and lots of cozy reads, um, a few new ones for myself, many favorite past reads. Um, <laughs> all I want to do is read right now, but I have work to do. I'm going to go ahead and finish up an illustration that I've been working on and then get to some admin tasks and fun freelancing, small business owning stuff. <laughs>
Are you the artist now? I think it suits you well. I've gotten into the bad habit of after I drink anything and I'm not sure how it started. I think it's because I filmed myself. I, I don't know, but that's my new thing. Um, man, today has been a really, really good day so far. I just finished my illustration. I am so happy with how it turned out. I cannot believe that I did this. Look at it, you guys. It makes me so incredibly happy. It's a representation of the coziness of the time in between seasons. So it's still really green, but there's also that autumnal yellow and some reds and oranges. And she's found a yellow leaf, one of the first of the season. It's kind of like seeing the first star of the night. If you find the first leaf, the first fallen leaf of the season, you can make a wish. Or at least that's what I've heard. So yes, if you love this painting, first off, thank you. Thank you so very much. Um, and secondly, I've just launched a new tier on my Patreon, and it's a monthly postcard and sticker tier. So if you sign up for this new tier, it's called Cinnamon and Clove. You will receive a monthly cozy postcard and a sticker to match illustrated by me. I have been so nervous leading up to this moment. However, now that I've done it, I am so excited. It's just... Mm. Oh, it's so good. I wish I could share this feeling with you. I hope that maybe I have in this video. I wish I could give this to each and every single one of you. This is a very good look. We all deserve the space and the freedom to be able to create and connect with others through our art and through our passions. Thank you for giving that to me. I hope to help you all do the same. That is the aim of my illustrations. I have no idea where I'm headed on the illustration quest. However, I do know that I want my illustrations to feel like a hug. I want them to comfort those who buy them. And I want my illustrations to help others believe that they, you, are beautiful and your life is so beautiful. And there's magic and childhood wonder anywhere you look. You just have to know how to find it. So that was really unexpected. I finished a painting that I really like and also I've made a new Patreon tier with postcards and stickers so check it out if you'd like. Um, but now I do have quite a bit of work to get done. Um, so friends, I will see you in a bit. Every shadow you see Ring a bell Shake a cross Give him hell Whatever the cause Summon all of your revelry Say a word against the Indies and see
Shout in your highest notes. Shout in your highest notes. And your life. Hello, friends. I am very satisfied with the amount of work I've gotten done this afternoon and evening. It's been a really productive day and I had the best morning. And I'm feeling so good and excited about my new illustration tier. If you decide to have a look, thank you. That being said, it has been a lot of work leading up to this point. Um, it's been a lot of late nights this week. And so I think I will cap off this cozy, productive autumnal day with a hot bath. I'm gonna light some candles and put on a cozy autumnal ASMR video and read my evening poem for the day and then I'm torn between reading The Name of the Wind or the third book in the All Souls trilogy. I can't decide which I want to do. I think I'm gonna read The Name of the Wind, at least the beginning, because I just love it. So friends, go ahead and get cozy, maybe even draw a bath. Um, or at least grab yourself your favorite cozy blanket and make a hot cup of tea. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting me. I hope that you have an absolutely lovely weekend. Here's to a cozy night.